And then let's move forward to the next speaker. Uh, we have Professor M. R. Pillai from India. Uh, he's PhD, DSC, and Group Director of Molecular Group of GM, uh, Companies in Kochi. Uh, before he was the head radio pharmaceutical division of Bhava Atomic Research Center. Then he became the technical officer in International Atomic Energy Agency, Vienna, Austria. Now, uh, before, after that, he was the visiting professor at University of Missouri, Columbia. He's a founder fellow of Indian College of Nuclear Medicine. Uh, his main uh, interest is radioisotope production using nuclear reactor and cyclotron, radio pharmaceutical chemistry, and nuclear medicine. And today, Professor Pillay is going to talk about emerging role of enzyme inhibitors um, in radio pharmaceutical developments. Professor Pillai Pillay. Thank you, Anil, for that uh, nice introduction. First of all, I should uh, thank uh, Professor Golay uh, for inviting me to this wonderful symposium and this wonderful uh, city. While I was working at the International Atomic Energy Agency, I had the opportunity to visit many countries, but uh, Russia was not included in that. So it is my pleasure to be back to be, to be in uh, Russia and the, to the most beautiful city of uh, Russia. I am also happy that you know this conference I had attended because I had a lot of reservation in the beginning because uh, connections were not very good because I have seen the amount of lutetium work what is being going on in the world. I am really fascinated because I am one of the very early researchers of lutetium radio pharmaceuticals development. We have started making lutetium in BRC in 1997 and uh, my publications are probably the third, fourth or fifth publication in lutetium. And when I was in uh, that then International Atomic Energy Agency, I had conducted uh, cooperative uh, coordinated research programs on lutetium, two of them, and some 16 member states each were pub uh, participating in this lutetium program. And that is one of the reasons why this lutetium has really really f very fast grown into the world and now it is one of the most important therapeutic radionuclides and I feel that the amount of lutetium what is being consumed in the whole world is more than that of iodine-131. So having said those two things, my special thanks to Oleg, he is not here. So let me get into a topic. Currently, as Anil said it, currently my work is actually I run a cyclotron. We make F-18 radio pharmaceuticals. We make uh, F-choline, uh, FDOPA, FDG. We also make technetium uh, cold kits. And also we are planning to start our riding on 31 uh, production facility, not the manufacturing facility, actually the dispensing facility for making solution and capsule. This is a private industry. I am not going to talk any of that thing. I am uh, going into a, a little science because I am a radio chemist and I like to talk a little of those science. Now, radio pharmaceutical sciences have been evolving for the last 90 years and nuclear medicine is there because there is a radio pharmaceutical. If there is no radio pharmaceutical, there is no nuclear medicine. Believe it, all this the nuclear medicine what we are talking today is thanks to the chemists, the biologists who thought about those, um, radio, those molecules, tried to radio label it and give it to the nuclear medicine doctors and thanks to those wonderful imaging instruments which were developed by the physicists. Now, enzyme inhibitors, we had been hearing right from the morning that you know, it is, uh, everybody is talking about FAPI, everybody is talking about um, PSMA, and this is a very latest development. Probably, you know, 10 years back, none of us heard about uh, PSMA. I'm sure nobody heard about it. But this has come very fast, and there is a potential that if you really look at enzyme inhibitors as a targeting molecule, there, there are going to be a large number of radio pharmaceuticals which can be developed for theranostics. Now, looking at the, our um, radio pharmaceutical development, I come from the 70s, mid 70s. I started working with the monoclonal antibodies at the University of Missouri, Columbia, trying to label it. We did a very good radiochemistry, but unfortunately, this 150,000 molecular weight is not good for the body. Monoclonal antibodies are very good targeting agents, very good therapy agents, provided they are not radio labeled with um, uh, radionuclides. The moment you radio, uh, radio label with radionuclide, it is going to linger in the body and the radiation dosimetry will not be good. There were two products which were introduced, probably both the products are not now available. Now then in the 90s, 
the molecule the peptides came lutetium dotatate is one of the very nice therapeutic agents the molecular weight is uh, of peptides are between 1000 and 5000 then came actually the lutetium psma a very small molecule very small molecule with a molecular weight of um, less than 1000 um, and now we also have this uh, fapi that is the second inhibitor molecule you know inhibitor molecules work uh, in the, this blocked mechanisms and these blocked mechanisms uh, play a major role in radio pharmaceutical sciences blocked mechanism means a molecule which is uh, labeled with a radionuclide is injected to the body it is going and re uh, reaching a target and it is not getting metabolized further that is why we are able to see this tumor uptake very nicely now it is not unknown to radio pharmaceutical chemists if you look at um, our um, fluorine um, fdg this is the molecule of the millennium it became the molecule of the millennium because it had a blocking mechanism if it was getting metabolized like uh, glucose it would not have become a radio pharmaceutical it is taken up by the glucose transportase um, protein then it is uh, the first enzyme is uh, duped by this mo molecule the first time enzyme cons uh, exokinase converts this molecule to fdg6 phosphate there it ends and there it ends in the tumor wherever there is a uh, this is getting it is not getting further metabolized so we are able to see a concentration of activity and that concentration of activity we are able to measure it using the imaging instruments now enzymes inhibitors as uh, targeting vectors again uh, enzyme um, block enzyme activity because you know there are a lot of diseases you know our human body is uh, full of enzymes there are a lot of diseases which are coming because of the enzyme uh, imbalance actually there may be more enzyme and because of that imbalance uh, this uh, there are diseases and by giving enzyme inhibitors you are able to treat that so enzyme inhibitors are actually in the medicine we have actually the viagra the medicine that is an enzyme inhibitor we have methotrexate which is also an enzyme inhibitor no none of us noticed this paper which was published by the john hopkins uh, university in uh, 2002 that means a scientist called pomper in um, maybe in 1990 late 90s he started working in the small molecule the small molecule is nothing but cysteine and glutamic acid combined through a urea bond and he did the c11 labeling and he did some biological studies and found that it, it has got very good excretion he never thought that at that time he never thought that this could be used as a imaging agent for prostate cancer they went ahead when they understood that you know this is uh, possible to uh, <coughs> image tumors which has got this gc2 or prostate specific membrane antigen enhancement they labeled it with f18 and this molecule was avail available probably they published in 2011 but them probably they were working as uh, early as uh, 2007 or 8 and also the skip uh, mers company was also working with a lot of these enzyme inhibitors with the technetium 99 but the real change came when the, the german group came with this wonderful molecule called they called it as the psma 11 i don't know what is the from psma 1 to 10 we do not know but maybe all those molecules which are developed earlier and the main advantage of this uh, PSMA 11 was at that time all the um, all the nuclear medicine departments they were having technium molecule in this uh, gallium generator and the use was not much because you know dot at it alone you cannot sustain the uh, gallium generator the moment this molecule had come they labeled it with the gallium 68 the publication had come in 2013 i remember and in 2014 in our nuclear medicine department we did this imaging we started this imaging and wonderful image you You have the biological uptake in the first uh, um, figure. On the middle figure, there is a very small lesion which is there, which is picked up, and in the third one, extensive metastasis is picked up. So this was almost like a you know revolution in uh, radio pharmaceutical chemistry, something which had come, and the nuclear medicine physicians, the oncologists, could not resist this molecule. Initially, they had resistance. Oh, prostate cancer is a um, you know cancer which is very slow growing. Why do you want to detect it? Let it be you know we will see the patient after 10 years but the moment psma had come they understood that you don't have to poke uh, the, uh, the prostate with the needles and give that um, you know invasive um, diagnosis 
there is a process, there is a PSMA scan. Now it has become an excellent uh, diagnostic pair and uh, today we had been hearing from all the many many speakers how lutetium PSMA has become one of the very nice agents and the people are also complaining that the patient they get is actually the later patients. I am sure lutetium PSMA can work much, more, much better if it is given to the patients which are not so, so much advanced. So definitely this has proven and uh, today the lutetium 177, the maximum consumption is actually for PSMA radio labeling because prostate cancer, unlike uh, neuroendocrine tumor, it is a major cancer. Now what is the advantage of these enzyme inhibitors? Now in, pro in peptides, we have a problem. We can do very little modification in the peptides, maybe a talk, knock and uh, tate. The difference is uh, hardly anything, whereas when it comes to peptide uh, inhibitors, the molecules can look very, very different. I have, you know, there are large number of uh, molecules uh, developed as PSMA inhibitors. I have just picked up three to say that none of them have any structural similarity. They look very different, but all the three can be radio labeled and all the three can become a radio pharmaceutical, both for thermosis, uh, both for labeling with lutetium or actinium or with um, gallium. So the versatility is the more versatility is there in um, um, enzyme inhibitors compared to the, that of uh, our peptides. Now we know life exists because of uh, enzyme reaction. When I am talking, so many enzymes are working. Uh, 1653 metabolic enzymes are reported in human body, and many of these enzymes are really elevated during disease, notably in cancer. So there is a potential for developing a large number of inhibitor-based radio pharmaceuticals. And the people had been talking about FAPI, that is the next molecule. And um, FAPI is um, <coughs> really coming out as a very nice agent, more versatile agent because more cancers can be imaged with the FAPI. I think FAPI 46 is the, what many people are doing. But there the problem is that if you have this FAPI 46 labeled with the lutetium and injected to the body, it is not remaining like lutetium PSMA. Lutetium PSMA stays there as rock stable, whereas uh, this FAPI 46 with the lutetium, it will come out, but the chemists are always innovative, you know, they keep on thinking, why not we modify this molecule? So there are, uh, like my previous uh, speaker said, it is my old version. So. <laughs> <laughs> so there are um, wonderful molecules like uh, my uh, previous speaker has uh, showed about that 2286, FAPI 2286. FAPI 2286 and FAPI 46, they are entirely different because uh, the, all these FAPI molecules, they have this quinoline uh, as the blocking agent, whereas in that particular molecule, 2286, there is no quinoline as the inhibitor and it has become a very nice uh, radio, it is being uh, explored by many people. Now, will there only be the enzyme inhibitors will be used? You know, there are a large number of uh, medicines which are now coming in the category of Nib actually. They call it as, a, you know, a many of this imatinib, uh, nilotininib. They are all small molecules. These are all small molecules inhibitors, not necessarily, not necessarily enzyme inhibitors. They may be in, uh, inhibiting some of the signal pathways which are responsible for cancer uh, growth. And many of these molecules which are now, I think I uh, uh, read a review article, they said that, you know, FDA, US FDA has uh, approved 75 molecules as therapeutic agents. I'm sure, you know, radio pharmaceutical chemists can modify many of these um, molecules and some of them could prove very nice radio pharmaceuticals for theranosis. Because, you know, theranosis advantage is that unlike these drugs, we have to send in milligram quantities. In theranosis, we have to send only in microgram or nanogram quantities. So the side effects will be very less and the radiation will be targeted to the tumor. So to conclude, Enzyme inhibitors are successful carriers to be developed as diagnostic and therapeutic radio pharmaceutical. We are convinced because of these two molecules, that is the PSMA and the FAPI. 
and uh, several more enzyme inhibitors will evolve as successful targeting vectors. You know, when we are talking, we do not know how many chemists in their laboratory are uh, trying to combine two or three molecules and uh, bring more and more uh, enzyme inhibitors. And probably after a few years, we will re remember, uh, we will listen about it, we will start using it. But one of the problem is that we will forget those chemists. So we have to remember those chemists who developed these enzyme inhibitors, those radiopharmaceuticals, those ligands, those radioisotopes, we should always think about uh, those people because um, why I am telling is that, you know, I have worked in University of Missouri um, as a postdoctoral research with David Troudner and he had a patent on samarium EDTMP, samarium 153, and in that samarium 153 ED, EDTMP patent, he has written three or four radioisotopes, and one of that radioisotopes was lutetium-177. Nobody touched lutetium-177 almost about 10 years uh, later. We started working on it, and there were two or three papers. In all fairness, there were two or three papers with lutetium-177. So with this, I will um, conclude by telling there are other inhibitor mole molecules used for, as medicine, which are potential targeting vectors to be developed as radiopharmaceuticals. And um, looking at my age, Definitely, I don't have the time to do all that chemistry. I'm sure, you know, all the cells should um, clearly look into those new molecules and try to develop the radiopharmaceutical. Thank you, Anil. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Pillai. Um, you all uh, agree with me that uh, very nicely he um, mentioned the subject, which is very complex to design the molecules, um, to develop the radiopharmaceutical, which is the part of bread and butter for everyone, that we take the... Uh, support from the pharmaceuticals, either the enzymes or antibodies or protein or peptide, optimer and nucleotides to, to really club in. And uh, this is the one example for the enzyme inhibitors. My question to Professor Pillai is that why every day we have to modify the FAPI and we have to come with the different uh, uh, series of this FAPI, um, not to conclude in one or two? You know, any radio pharmaceutical, the efficacy depends upon its pharmacokinetics. That means, okay, when you are doing a diagnosis, our idea is that, you know, we need a good image. <laughs> Whereas when you put a therapeutic radionuclide, we have a radionuclide with a half-life of uh, seven days, um, lutetium. I don't want that um, FAPI to come out of the tumor in two days. That means I am putting 200 milligury of um, um, lutetium to the patient, about 5 milligury is into the tumor, and that 5 milligury comes out in a couple of days. I would like that to remain there forever and completely decay it and give that entire radiation dose to the tumor. So we need to be innovative. The chemist will have to work mm -hmm. and work harder to get the best molecule out of it. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Professor Pillai. Age is just number, and we see that you are coming on bench and to do some chemistry. Um, Thank you, Anil.